Okay, so today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make this lovely cow neck design. I actually wore this piece out and a client of mine saw me and needed to do hers. She's a plus size so I decided to use the avenue to show you guys how I achieved my top. I also made a trouser to fit. So guys, if you love this video, please give it a thumbs up as we start. So these are my tools for making this design. I have my tape, my pattern master, my ruler, scissors, and my marker pen. Everything all set out. So I have my pattern paper taped down to the table. And the first thing I'm going to be doing is to draw out a guideline. Because I want to be doing this design from my basic bodice pattern. So I'm going to go over my basic bodice pattern. So the first thing I'll do is to determine the neckline I needed for this cow neck design. So I'm going to be marking 3 inches and for the width I'm going to be using 4.5. But having in mind that I'm doing this for a plus size, I'm going to be adding extra half inch to that effect. So using my pattern master, I need to connect the lines from my neck width down to my neck depth line. So guys, if you love the video already, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel. I promise to do better. Okay guys, so now having gotten what I wanted, the next thing I'm going to do is to take the shoulder measurement, which is 5 inches. So I mark my 5 inches. Remember, my client is a plus size. So from that 5 inches, I'm going to be going down by 1.5 to enable my shoulder slope very nicely so i'm connecting from my neckline down to that dot line just like so so the next thing i'm going to be doing now is to measure the armhole which i'll be taking nine inches so from there i'll go from my neckline to my bust line which is 12 inches to my waistline which is 18 inches and for my hip line i'm using 25 inches because of my plus size line so i'm going to draw a horizontal line to that effect so here to my bust line waistline hip line and so forth so i'm gonna go ahead and label it having in mind that my armhole line can be used as my chest line so having done that, I'm going to be taking the armhole measurement now. So I'm going to draw a horizontal line to that effect. Then I will start by taking the circumference measurement of my client's size. So I'm going to be inputting all the measurements I got. That is your round bust measurement divided by 4 and your round hip measurement, waist measurement divided by 4 and your round hip measurement divided by four. So I'm gonna be connecting all those lines together, just like so. And when I'm done, I'm gonna connect it vertically to meet with each other, just like this. I'm gonna be using my pattern master to give a curve to the hip line, just like so. So the next thing I'm going to do is to break the armhole measurement. So I'm going to find the midpoint, which is 4.5. And I'm going to connect from the shoulder line to the half inch, which I'm going into. So I'm going to connect this way. And using my pattern master, I'm going to curve it down to my armhole line, just like so. So I'm going to go ahead to use my marker to blend it more nicely, just like this. So if you guys have any question, you can drop in my comment section as regards to what I'm doing so far. So the next thing I'm going to do is to extend my top measurement. As you can see in the first video, my top was really long to the extent it was kind of covering my hips. 
So I go ahead to determine a new lens measurement. And when I'm satisfied with what I have, I decided to leave it that way. So now the next thing I'm doing is to cut out the back. So I'm placing my front pattern onto another fresh pattern paper. And as you can see, there should be a zipper line. But in this tutorial, I'm not making use of zip because the back is closed and the drape is just in the front. So I'm gonna be closing up the zip line and I'm gonna be tracing down the front bodies onto the back piece, just like so. So I'm gonna go for to trace the shoulder, trace the armhole, making everything equal at this point. So I'm just gonna be tracing it like so. just like so then for the armhole I'm gonna come back to that much later when I'm doing the cutting so I'm just gonna draw a line upwards indicating that is where my shoulder weight my neck weight it's gonna sit so I'll go ahead and cut out the neckline for the front piece and set that aside so having done this the next thing i'm gonna do from that line i'm gonna take down one inch downwards for my neckline just like so i'm gonna be connecting it to that line to which i drew upwards with my pattern master just like so i try as much to make it shallow so it doesn't drip at the back so the next thing i'm gonna do is to go ahead and cut out my back pattern just like so So now I'm done cutting out the back and the front pattern, as you can see in the video. So the next thing I'm going to do is to set the paper aside and place another new fresh pattern paper on my table. Then now I'm going to be working on the front side. So to achieve that cow neck design, I'm going to be using a method known as slash and spread. So from my shoulder line, I'm going to be marking out 1.5 inch. So I'll be getting like three lines from my shoulder line like so. And because I need more drip, I'm going to go down to the armhole to continue creating that. So from the front side pattern, I'm going to be going down by two inches on each. So here okay, I have my two inches and I'm going to go down to my armhole side to create more lines also. So here using my pattern master, I'm gonna be connecting those lines towards the center front, just like this. So. So you should bear in mind that the more lines you give, the more likely you are to have a huge drape so i think i got carried away and i was adding extra and extra lines so that this can drip very well on my client okay so having done that the next thing i'm going to do is to slash these lines just like so so i'm going to be slashing them one after the other just like so making sure you don't cut it through So this is how it looks when you slash them. Make sure you don't cut through. Just leave a little bit of space so that your, your paper can move around and drip so well. So having done this, because I'm making for a, a, a plus size, I'm gonna be slanting my pattern a little bit from the center line so that it can drip nicely because i'm making this for a plus size you have to do some manipulations especially when you're making outfit for plus size so it can suit the person so having in mind that i used two two inches for the center front initially so i should i will make sure that my spreads are two inches only okay so i'm gonna measure two inches and in the openings and i'm gonna tape them down just like so i 
I really love this metal like it helped me achieve lots of things and I look forward to doing multiples of slash and spread designs for you guys so I go ahead to tape everything down so having in mind the measurements I needed for my client's drape I decided to do a shoulder slash of uh, 14 inches for her because I really want her to be able to slip in the outfit through her neck with no obstructions and again I really want that allowances as you can see on the first video I, I really want the allowances on the neckline so that's why I'm ruling this line and I'm using 14 inches if you are a smaller size you can make use of 11 inches so that you can be able to slip your head through your your drape and be comfortable without having any problems staining your makeup when you wear your clothes so i'll go ahead and trace out these new lines on a new fresh pattern paper just like so and when i'm done and i love the outcome i'm gonna go ahead and tip down some areas that might move when i'm cutting this fabric like the sides and the armhole so having done that i'm gonna grab my scissors and give a nice cut to my lines just like so so this is what i'm having basically you can see some patterns are moving back and forth so now having in mind that i didn't add a facing to that i decided to add a facing this facing will enable my neckline drape more and look neat when you see them or when you wear them so i'm gonna be taping down another pattern paper to this and from that i'm gonna be measuring three inches upward from my normal pattern line just like so so i'll measure three inches up to the end of the other side just like so so i will just rule a line to the dot lines like this and I will just cut the remaining part off. So the next thing I'm gonna do is to fold down my facing just like this so that when I cut it, all the points will sit automatically. So you need to face down your facing just this way before you give it a cut so that by the time you are joining it on your fabric, you will not have this problem. So having done that, remember to give a notch to that point so guys here is a fabric i'm using for my client it's a lovely duchess fabric and very soft to behold so i'm gonna go ahead and place my pattern paper on it and i'm gonna cut all through including my my facing so i'm gonna go ahead and measure it again to be sure i'm satisfied with my measurement before i go ahead to cut it all through So here this is what I have. I'm giving a notch to indicate my facing line. So please take note of this notch I gave here because when I'm joining this fabric, I will show you the essence why I gave those notch. So here I'm cutting my back pattern just like so. And after I'm done, I'll head over to my sewing machine. Here is the thread I'm using for this tutorial, just the exact thread for my fabric. And I'm going to just thread my machine like so and get ready for the work. Sorry, I'm kind of having a cutter. <clears throat> it took me a while threading this machine. So having done that, it's time to sew my pieces together so here is the back side first of all i will be biasing the neck of my back because i didn't cut a face into that so i will be biasing the neck using the same fabric i just had to cut out a one inch stripe fabric and i'm using it to bias the back neckline of my fabric just like so I 
I hope you guys are enjoying this tutorial. Please don't forget to like, give it a thumbs up, please, and also subscribe to my channel. Okay, because I'm back this time and I'm back to back and I'll be giving you the hot designs. You can also follow me on my Instagram page at Addiction by Chelsea. Trust me, guys, you will enjoy every bit of your stuff with me. So, having done this, I, I'm going to grab my front piece and I'm going to be joining it to the back piece just like so. So now, this is my front piece. And remember, I gave a notch somewhere, so I'm actually looking for the notch. So, here I see the notch. And the first thing I'm going to do is to add my back so I just look at this very well my back neckline to the notch part and then fold the notch part all together with the front and the back as you can see to be able to create a nice finishing both inside and outside of my garment just take a look at it very well and if you don't understand you can drop your question in the comment section thank you so I'm going to repeat the same thing on the other side It's very easy and simple to sew the only difficult thing there is the cotton but joining is very easy so I repeated the same thing on the other side and I'm going to sew on half inches just like so So I haven't done this, this is how it turned out. Remember, this is not my size. This is for a plus size. You can imagine how it will look when she wear it. It drapes so, so, so nicely. So guys, this is the final look of my top. I went ahead to add the sleeve, which I will show you in my next tutorial, how to cut the sleeve. And I also did a long belt to match. So, if you like this video guys please give it a thumbs up drop your comment if you have any and also don't forget to subscribe and put on a notification bell to this thank you guys